boy, do I have a treat for all of you today because we have news about who Judge Judy is going to endorse in 2020. And, you know, I've been agonizing over this. I've played out the scenarios in my head wondering who she's going to support. But we finally have an answer. Judge Judy is going to support billionaire Mike Bloomberg, who is currently trying to buy his way into the White House. So, I mean, candidates vie for it, but only one is lucky enough, and this time it's Mike Bloomberg. So, Judge Judy is uh, going to now advocate for him, and this is the case that she made. I'm Judge Judy Scheinlin, and I'm a pretty good judge of character. Mike Bloomberg will be a great president. He's a job creator, a manager, an innovative mayor, and an impactful philanthropist. He'll unite and lead the country. Case Shut up! Wow, that was amazing. Thank you, Judy. Judge Judy, I should say. Um, yeah. <laughs> My first thought was, why do we care about what Judge Judy says? And how sad is this for Mike Bloomberg that the only name-worthy person, I guess, who is choosing to support his campaign is that really mean lady who yells at people on TV, yells at poor people specifically on TV? Like, why does this matter? And in actuality, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. But the reason why I wanted to talk about this, the coveted Judge Judy endorsement, Judith Scheinlin, I think that's her name, I'm pretty sure, um, is because for whatever reason, the mainstream media is taking this seriously. They're treating this as if it's a big deal. She's a TV judge. We're talking about this endorsement because why? Apparently, this is a really big deal. So she went on cable news to explain why she has endorsed Mike Bloomberg because there's just so much at stake and he's the right person for the job at this time. So she went on The View and Joy Behar pressed her in a really shitty way and asked her why she would support someone who is relatively controversial because he's trying to buy his way into the uh, election, into the White House. That's kind of bad for democracy. And I'm interpreting, you know, the way that Joy Behar framed the question way more charitably than she actually did. Nonetheless, here's what Judge Judy uh, had to say. Bloomberg has already spent, he's rich, we know he's rich, he spent $155 million on campaign ads. Uh, so critics are saying that he's just another billionaire like Steyer, who's basically what they say, I don't see it this way, but a lot of people say he's trying to buy his way into the campaign and into the election. So is he? Well, the last time I looked, Tom Steyer never governed anything. No, but, that, that's, not, <laughs> but that's not the parallel. I like that, that read. What? That's some good shade. I like what? that. <laughs> but that's well, just the parallel. Actually, the parallel is about the money. <laughs> well, because I mean, you can you... also say that Biden also has experience as vice president. You said none of them have any, tr any experience with governing. They have, actually. Well, either you're the president of the company and you're the vice president of a company. If you're the president, the buck stops where you are. Mm -hmm. You're, you can be a number two man. Yeah. Number two man is a night. They go, well, they go to their business. the United States of what? America. It's a, number, it's a big number two. It's a big number two. Yeah. It still isn't the responsibility of governance. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I think that to define Mike Bloomberg as just another rich guy is one of the greatest injustices of this political campaign that we're in. Because Mike Bloomberg is the only one of the candidates who has experience governing and managing and successful. And if he's successful and happened to have made money being successful, that, folks, is the American dream. Shut up! I'm sorry, I have to put the shut up meme at the end of every video. <laughs> I'm talking about how a multi-millionaire is endorsing a multi-billionaire who's trying to buy his way into the White House. It's a story that's so stupid that I can't help but be at least a little bit immature when I'm talking about this. So, I mean, as I warned you about, Joy Behar pressed her in the shittiest way possible. You know, some people say, I'm not saying this, I don't believe this, that he's trying to buy his way into the race. How do you respond? And of course, Judge Judy couldn't really defend it because that is not really defensible. Like, having a billionaire trying to literally buy his way into the White House, that's something that can't happen if you care about democracy, right? If you truly are a Democrat, small d Democrat, then obviously you can't have things like that happening. That obviously erodes democracy even further than it already has been eroded. But this was what Judge Judy said. Well, to define Mike Bloomberg as just another rich guy is one of the great injustices of this political campaign that we're in. Judy, shut the fuck up. 
Shut up! Because poor Mike Bloomberg, the billionaire, how dare anyone criticize him? That is a great injustice. And I love how she kind of like pointed to herself when she said injustice because she knows about justice. She's a television judge, you guys. She yells at poor people. Okay, um, and then on top of that, her rationale for supporting him is completely nonsensical. She claims that she supports him because he has the most experience. Now, he doesn't have the most political experience. He was only a mayor, but he has the best kind of experience. He is a self-made billionaire who ran his own camp company. So if you're the president of a company, that's more important than being the president of, you know, um, a state, a governor, if you will. Um, that rationale makes absolutely no sense. And then she goes on to say that, you know, him being rich, we can't, like, fault him for that. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. That's just the American dream. No. The American dream is not becoming a billionaire Judge Judy. First of all, the American dream is dead. It's dead. But second of all, the American dream is not about becoming a billionaire because you can't become a billionaire by earning that money. You become a billionaire by exploiting the system, the economy, and your workers. You cannot morally become a billionaire you have to do bad to become a billionaire and to amass that much wealth shows that you are greedy and inherently a bad person at least amoral immoral at worst so i mean for her to say this it, it's just there's no real reason why she's supporting uh, mike bloomberg now she went on cnn chris cuomo interviewed her and she gave a little bit more justification as to why she's supporting him and I'm even more confused now as to why she's supporting Mike Bloomberg, because for someone who is seemingly intelligent, um, at least she sounds smart when she yells at people, I mean, her justification here is, it's idiotic, to be frank. Why are you getting involved in one of the ugliest periods of our politics? You've stayed out of it scrupulously for so long. Why now? We're a very young country. 250 years old still cutting our teeth. I don't think we need a revolution. I also think that we need someone who can bring this fractured American family back together again. When you can't go to a dinner with old friends or even with your family without open warfare and hostility over politics. I just got tired of the anger. You know, I'm senior. I have children and grandchildren. I want them to grow up in the country that I think is the greatest country in the world. And I think that the greatest country in the world should have the greatest president. Sadly, when you go into politics these days, it said to somebody, it's like having a daily colonoscopy. You know, it's... <laughs> Without that nice drug that puts you to bed. Well, with the propofol, yes, yeah, <laughs> right. But, but every aspect of your life is explored and dissected. So you have to be brave in order to do that. So I actually give credit to the entire democratic field for getting out there and exposing themselves. But I looked at that field and I said, I don't see greatness there. And I don't see someone who can stand toe to toe with the incumbent and be successful. I don't think that anybody matches Mike Bloomberg's experience. Being number two isn't being number one. The what about federal versus just a mayor? Well, I, federal, you mean, you're talking about the if two he senators. Was vice president of the United oh. States, these are senators, they deal with big issues, well, big uh, scale. He's a mayor. I will respond to your question in a, what I consider a moderate tone. Joe Biden is a very nice man. I'm sure he is. He wasn't a great for 40 years. Wasn't great. You know, you took jabs at him. That's the <laughs> As, job. That's the job. We got a whole you power did, to account. But, but you did. So nothing's changed, except he's gotten, a, Older. So he wasn't great then, what makes him great now? What Good makes question. Bloomberg great? He's really wealthy, he did it himself, he came up from nothing. Uh, another guy he from He knows from how Brooklyn. to govern. He how does he know how to govern on this level with these kinds of issues and players? Well, first of all, he's been out there since he's been out of office. He's been out there internationally 
climate change. He's been involved in world health through his philanthropies. He's been out there. He's big on uh, gun control also. And he's big on gun control, gun safety. He's, you know, if, if you think about it, everybody, not everybody, I'm sure you didn't, smoked in restaurants, bars and bars, we were used to it, you know, sort of used to it. I smoke to now with all the stress that I'm under. I'd okay. smoke right here right, right now if, if I wouldn't you... get fired. Mike Bloomberg said it's unreasonable. Well, when he said it's unreasonable, you can't smoke in bars and restaurants anymore. We... New York City thought it was going to collapse. It didn't. And his standard, that standard, became the standard in the United States. And if you travel internationally, with the exception of certain countries, people don't smoke inside restaurants anymore. They don't. And that's because he, there was a vision that this is the right thing for people, just like buckling up for safety. Shut up! I know, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> just one more time. <laughs> this is why I can't like put in memes too much in my videos because I overuse them and just irritate the audience. And it's usually memes that are like at least five years old. <laughs> Sometimes I've got that boomer mentality. So she obviously, at the beginning of that clip, took a shot at Bernie Sanders. She said, I don't think we need a revolution. Question, why would she say that? Answer, she is worth an estimated $420 million. 420 blaze it, Judy. I mean, imagine if you had $420 million, it doesn't matter who's elected, who's the president, who's in charge of Congress. None of that matters because nothing the government does will impact you in any meaningful way. She's going to be great. It doesn't matter if the entire, you know, planet becomes engulfed in flames. She's rich enough to buy one of these, you know, lifeboats that will inevitably be built. Probably the kind that we saw in Elysium with Matt Damon, which is a great movie, by the way. I mean, she's, she's okay. She's going to be perfectly fine. So it doesn't matter who is in office. But yet, at the same time, even though she's so rich that she's insulated from these issues that normal Americans have to deal with, you know, the reason why she's choosing to break the silence and talk about politics is because so much is at stake and Mike Bloomberg is just such a fantastic candidate that we have to support him. It's really important. She just can't stay silent. So why are you supporting him? Well, I mean, look at his experience. He managed to make sure that smoking was banned indoors. He kind of indirectly facilitated that, catalyzed that movement, but that's what he did. Is that honestly your reasoning, Judy? You're literally saying that we should all support this billionaire who's trying to buy his way into the White House because he complained about smoking indoors? Because he believes that um, being a nanny which is not going to play well in a general, is going to help him win. I mean, this individual banned big gulps in New York City. <laughs> so, you know, that is a minor inconvenience, but if you still want a shitload of soda, you just buy two instead of one. I mean, this is, this is such an idiotic, vacuous way to analyze the role of politics. And because she's rich, she doesn't even have a political ideology. I'm assuming it's just this, like, vague, amorphous idea of, like, being kind to each other and supporting experience. I don't know. But, I mean, this is just, this is not a good reason. For someone who is intelligent, you'd expect better reasoning. But there's nothing there. She gave us nothing. And on top of that, um, she wants someone who can unite the country because she's tired of all this division. First of all, explain why the country is divided in the first place, but you can't. Second of all, why is Mike Bloomberg, of all people, the one who can unite the country? Why? Like, you haven't adequately described, as a surrogate for Mike Bloomberg, why he's the one most capable of uniting the country. Why? What is it about him that makes him more capable? If anything, he's divisive because most people in the Democratic Party, I'm assuming, don't like that he's running because he's trying to buy his way into the race. So, I mean, how is he going to unite the country when his own fucking party hates him, Judy? I mean, how embarrassing. Now, she just droned on and said really nothing, so I'm not going to play the full clip. I'll link to it down below if you want to watch it. But Stop and Frisk came up, and I mean, the way that she defended him, embarrassing. 
She basically said, well, you know, he has genuinely changed. He no longer agrees. But really, when he implemented stop and frisk, it wasn't because, you know, he is racially insensitive and wanted to target black and brown people. He truly believed that in implementing this policy, he would make New York City safer. Duh. I shouldn't have to say this to someone who is much older, probably much, much more educated than me. Having good intentions doesn't translate into good public policy. It doesn't matter to me that when he implemented a racist policy, that his heart was in the right place. Who gives a flying fuck about that? When people's lives are at stake, it doesn't matter to me that you have good intentions. What matters to me is that you know the right policies that will produce good results for the country. Period. End of story. Mike Bloomberg is not able to demonstrate that he can do that. If anything, being a billionaire, it shows that he doesn't have the right instinct to do what's good for the country because by hoarding that much wealth, it shows he is a bad person. It shows that he doesn't have the right character that we need in the White House, right? You're a bad person if you're a billionaire because you're never going to be able to spend all that money even if he's lucky enough to live to be 2,000 years old. Not going to happen. And what I take away from all of this, and I mean, this is sheer speculation, mind you, is that Judge Judy doesn't really believe that Mike Bloomberg politically is the best bet, you know, who can actually unite the country and deliver on policy. I think that the only reason why she's supporting him is probably because, like, they're friends or something, and they hang out, you know, at the same cocktail parties. That's, uh, that's the only reason, because if you are going to break your silence when you don't really get political and talk about who you're supporting, you'd think that there'd be this really huge reason that there's just, even if I don't necessarily agree, I want to be able to understand your reasoning and hearing her speak, I don't get it. So, I mean, Judge Judy is canceled. It's as simple as that. <laughs> I'm part of the problem. Um, yeah, she's canceled though. Seriously. Fuck Judge Judy. Um, I know that if she ever sees this, which she won't, but if she does, she'd want to yell at me. That's fine, Judge Judy. Yell at me. Point your finger at me. Call me stupid. Tell me to shut up. I don't care. I love it. It's my kink to be yelled at by Judge Judy. <laughs> I've said too much. Okay. Gonna end the video there. Judge Judy endorsed Mike Bloomberg and the media is going along with this as if it's a big deal. It doesn't matter. Um, Judge Judy's endorsement is inconsequential. The only thing that I find entertaining about this is the fact that anyone, including Mike Bloomberg and Judge Judy to a degree, think this is meaningful. Doesn't matter. Shut up! Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous, and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.